Hi, and welcome to Music and Theatre Education. I'm Miss Ezzy, and this is my online classroom. Today I'm going to teach you some classic choir warm-ups that I love to use, and they should be perfect for any new choir teacher. So why do we warm up? Now, as educators, it's really important for us to teach our students to always warm up before they sing and to warm up correctly. It's not only going to prevent vocal damage, but it's also going to help them sing at their best. It's good to start with a physical warm up because we're not only using our vocal cords when we are singing. Some activities that I like to do is reaching for the ceiling and then reaching for your toes. However, that sometimes is not a Good one to use in schools if you have students wearing skirts. Other physical warm-ups I like to use is rolling the shoulders backwards and forwards. I also like to do a face warm-up where you massage your face. So you can go all the way around your face. If you have a tight jaw particularly, I clench my teeth a lot. So massaging that jaw down is always really good. It feels quite nice as well, especially after they've been cooped up in a classroom all day. It's not so good as a teacher if you wear foundation because you end up with foundation all over your hands. And then my other one that is quite good but quick to do is chewing. If you've got little ones teaching primary school choirs, you can get them to pick their favourite colour and favourite flavour of bubblegum, pop it in, and a nice big disgusting chew. Warms up their whole face and is a little bit of fun as well. Next up is breathing. Now this is one I put less emphasis on with the older kids because they generally know how to do it relatively well, although they do need reminders, but for your young ones it's very important. It's also quite a useful tool if they've come in hot and bothered and all very excited because it can calm them down. Now my two very simple breathing exercises, first one very easy, all it is is yawning, but you want them to do the most outrageous over the top yawn they possibly can. It also loosens up their body as well and acts as a bit of a physical warm up as well. The other breathing exercise I like to do is 4, 7, 8. Those numbers represent the number of beats that they're going to breathe for. So you breathe in for 4 beats, hold it for 7 and breathe out for 8. Now it shows great control. But what you want to remind your students is to breathe from down in the diaphragm rather than up in their chest and in their shoulders. You'll generally be able to see if they're breathing through their shoulders because you'll see them rise when they breathe in. I also like to do a beatboxing warm up, get those lips moving, the tongues moving and get some concentrating. So for example, I might use p, 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 p or a t, 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 then add them together. Change the rhythm. P -p -ts, p -p -ts. Add in a different syllable. P -t -k -t, p -t -k -t. You can mix it all up and do so lots of different things. After that, I like to get into humming, which gives you a nice transition into singing. So I pick a pattern, usually in tones, and then progress up by semitones. I like to start around a B flat or a C because it's relatively comfortable for most students. Later you'll change it to an ah, 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 then you might change it to an oh, 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 oh even an ooh, ooh. So using those open vowels you're doing a lovely progression into singing. Next up I would do vocal sirens. You have your standard vocal siren. Ah, and you can change the vowels with those. But then you might like to make them a bit different and add in a lip or a tongue trill. So we have our lip trill. And the tongue trill. And you can tell whether your students are breathing properly because if their tongue stops, then they haven't got enough air moving. Next I would do a scalic exercise. 
One of the most classic ones is 1121. All you're doing is counting from 1 to 8, a number for every note in the scale, and adding on a number each time. Here's how it goes. 8. Then you can take out numbers. For example, if you took out 2, you'd go 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 3, 1, 1, 3, 4, 3, 1. So you're leaving out a number which is great for kids' inner hearing. One of the most important parts of your warm up is range extension because you want to be warming the full range of students high and low. For going higher, my favourite activity to use is bouncing along like a ping pong ball. The kids love this one. I do something very simple on the keyboard because I'm not much of a keys player, but the kids seem to like it. I'll start this exercise on a C. Have a listen. Bouncing along like a ping pong ball. Bouncing along like a ping pong ball. Bouncing along like a ping pong ball. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Bouncing along like a ping pong ball. Bouncing along like a ping pong ball. Bouncing along like a ping pong ball. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. And if you're finding your students are seeing it quite flat or a bit dead, it's good to get them, or yourself, to have your hand and bounce while you're singing. The descending exercise that I like to use is mayonnaise. Mayo, 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 mayonnaise. Mayo, 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 mayonnaise. Now, if you don't have a keyboard on you, you can sing those pitches and sing mayo to give their starting next starting note. One of the tongue twisters I like to use to help with diction is my mum makes me mash my mini M&Ms on a Monday morning yum yum and I do it to pitch as well. My mum makes me mash my mini M&Ms on a Monday morning yum yum and you can do that one either ascending or descending. It can be used as a range exercise as well. Lastly I always like to finish with a round. You may be thinking why don't we just get straight to singing? Is it not the same thing? Well, no. My main purpose for doing rounds is to engage critical listening, so seeing if they're in tune with each other and to work on their ensemble skills. One of the rounds that I like to use is called La Ti Do Re. It's originally called Alleluia, but we like to do it in solfa. I usually start on an A because it fits nicely in most kids' ranges. La ti do re, la ti do re, la ti do re, do re mi, mi fa, mi la fa, mi la ti la ti do, do la do ti la la. Make sure your students are not singing ray, which is very common for Australians to do. It needs to be a re, up and down, re, rather than a ray. When a ray of sunshine, it's a re. It gives you much better intonation and a much lovelier sound. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it helped some teacher out there who's starting their very first choir. Good luck and have a blast because taking choirs is so much fun. 
You know the drill on YouTube, like, share and subscribe. And I'd love to know in the comments, what's your favourite choir warm up? Or did you try one of mine that you've never heard of before? Please let me know. Thank you for joining me today. If you're in Perth, hope you're not feeling too hot as it's quite warm today. But for now, I'll see you next time and keep on that theatre adventure.